Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. Thank you so much for joining me today on Facebook Live. Um, if you would put your name in, um, if you can hear me in the comments, I would really appreciate it. Hey Kimbo, hey baby. Kim wants to go to lunch. I'm running a little late today and she wants to go, go for a car ride. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. And in this live video, we're talking about another one of the dog training myths that I talk about in my new ebook, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. Um, you can grab your copy right here, bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. If somebody could post that in the comments for me, I would really, really appreciate it because I can't, I can't comment, I don't think, while I'm alive. Um, Anyway, so we're talking about another myth of dog training. Um, and this is something so many dog trainers still do. And it's so frustrating because it's harming your dog. It's harming the relationship that you have with your dog. It's harming um, the trust that your dog has in you um, and other humans because other humans are also doing this to them. Um, so it's something we never ever ever want to do it's not necessary and that is to be physical with your dog and what I mean by that is um you know snatching their collar or smacking their face or any anything that you might be doing that a dog trainer may have taught you to do um to exert dominance physically over your dog or any other dog is 100% completely not necessary. Um, it's cruel, it's inhumane, and there are so much better ways to train um, using positive reinforcement. And that is kind of one of the foundations of force-free training is to not be forceful with your dog, to not you know, physically exert dominance over them. It's something we never wanna do with our dogs. Um, and here's why. So put yourself in this situation. Think about when you were growing up. Now this may have happened to you, this may not have happened to you, and of course there's a whole spectrum of, you know, uh, levels of, of violence, obviously. But imagine, um, imagine you're growing up, you're a little kid, and one of your parents, one of your aunts, one of your uncles, what, whoever it may be, um, instead of showing you the proper way to do something. So let's say they're teaching you how to write, you know, write the alphabet, how to, how to write, um, just going through the alphabet and learning how to write all the letters. And instead of showing you how to properly do it, they give you a pencil and a piece of paper, and when you can't figure it out, they smack you upside the head. That's basically, that's what you're doing when you are physically exerting dominance over your dog. What's gonna happen to that child? First of all, they're going to be fearful. Um, they're probably going to, um, you know, become introverted and turn into themselves. They don't want to be around people. They think everybody is going to be physically abusive to them. Um, relate, they, they are going to have a problem building relationships because they have trust, trust issues. These are all the same things that are going to, that are happening with your dog. If you're being physically dominant with your dog, um, they're going to not properly learn the, how to write, right? The alphabet. They're going to continue getting hit. They're going to, um, uh, again, you know, have trust issues. They're going to have so many emotional problems as well as they're not actually getting, um, they're not learning what they're supposed to be learning. And what's going to happen is that instead of getting better, instead of building trust and learning how to build relationships, um, they are going to seek ways, any way they can, to avoid that physical violence. So if it's, you know, staying late at school or sleeping at a friend's house or, I mean, any, any possible thing they can do to, uh, you know, locking themselves in a closet or the, they're going to do anything they possibly can to avoid um, that violence from whoever it may be. And at some point, that child is going to grow up 
and they're going to leave the house. Um, they may even lash out at that person in, phys in retaliation um, physically if they are, you know, feel strong enough to do so. So all of these things are going to happen. Now, your dog can't necessarily leave the house. I mean, they may break out and, and run away, but um, all of these same things are happening in a dog when you physically exert violence over them um, or you're violent and, <laughs> and you physically exert yourself over a dog. So all of these things are still happening in your dog. They're, they're not learning how to build trust and build relationships. So they're not going to have trust in you um, they're not going to learn what they need to be learning. They're not going to, um, you know, be the social butterfly that they should be. And it's all because a dog trainer has taught you wrong in the past. And that's not your fault. But now, now we know better. And now we can do better. And that's your responsibility with your dog. Um, what, what we do as force-free positive reinforcement dog trainers is we help we help an owner and a dog respect each other and form the bond necessary to properly train your dog. So fear does not equal respect. It never has and it never will. And there are a lot of people in the world who think that fear equals respect. And it's really sad because they don't have any real friends. They don't have any real bonds and connections with people because all they're doing is making people fear them thinking that they're getting respect. Um, and that's just not the case. All of those people around them, all of the people that they are making fear them are only looking for ways to avoid, to avoid them and to get away from living in fear and your dog is the exact same way. Um, so you cannot, fear does not equal respect. And what we want to do is, um, earn your dog's respect and in return, have your dog respect you. So that's how we, we, why we use, uh, positive reinforcement to mold and shape behaviors in our dogs. Um, and positive reinforcement is, you know, you have a behavior or an action that is your goal. And as you work towards that goal and your dog is um, getting it and starts doing the things you want them to do, um, you reward that with something positive for the dog, something of value to the dog. A lot of times that's a treat. Um, for some dogs, it's playing or a, a, one of their favorite toys. Um, it can be just love and cuddles and being petted. A lot of dogs are... are very highly motivated by that kind of uh, reinforcement. But again, a lot of times we do use treats and foods because it is one of um, uh, the, uh, one of the primary reinforcers. So uh, that's how we do it. We use positive reinforcement to mold and shape behaviors and using um, being physically assertive to your dog is a complete myth. It is completely unnecessary and actually in the long run will backfire on you. So um, this is just one of the myths of dog training that I talk about in my new ebook, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. Please go grab yourself a copy. You won't be disappointed. It's only like five bucks. Um, go grab your copy, bit.ly slash seven steps dog training. And thank you so much for typing that in the comments. I see somebody has typed it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any, if you have any questions about dog training, dog behavior, we can talk about cats. Got a lot of information on them too. Um, nutrition for your dogs and cats. I love talking about that. It is super important. Any questions you may have, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to answer your questions and possibly even make a video to answer that question for you. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this live video. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you, if you like it, share it with your friends because we all know somebody who needs this information in their life um, to better their life to better their relationship between them and their dog. And uh, follow me on social media. And again, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. I will see you in the next video.